Goldstein. And very excited to have on the Goldstein on Gelt Show, my twin brother. Well, he's actually not my twin brother, but very, very much like me in the business of financial planning, also with the radio show and also a writer, is Wes Moss coming to us from Atlanta, Georgia. Wes, how you doing? Doug, I'm great. Great to be with you on this side of the world. <laughs> so welcome to Israel. So Wes is actually the, the author of a book called You Can Retire Sooner Than You Think. Why would someone want to retire sooner than he thinks? Well, I mean, there's a lot of there's there's also there's there's obviously a lot behind that. Um, you know, I, I've I spent a lot of time, as you have in your career, trying to help people to get to a point really about, about just financial freedom and about stopping work for any for a number of reasons. It's funny, the probably the number one most consistent reason I hear that I don't know how much it really plays into the decision, but we live in a metro Atlanta, a, a metro a city, uh, probably traffic wise, uh, maybe may the same or maybe even worse than where you guys are. But people in Atlanta regularly commute an hour each way. So an hour, hour and a half, sometimes each way. And after 20 or 30 years of working and commuting and kind of pounding in the big city, people get burned out and they get tired and they want to have the financial wherewithal to be able to stop making that big commute. And, and I think that that's obviously just a small part of it, but it's analogous to having freedom to go do some of the things or maybe many of the things that we have had to trade off because we've been making a living for our family and putting our kids through school and saving for retirement. And we want to be able to, 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 to get to a point where we don't have to do a job that we're sick of uh, anymore. And that's that's all about retiring is early, hopefully, in America. I think it's important to separate between having to go to a job because you have to do it and also realizing that for a lot of people, having a job is a big part of their identity. It's their, their, their ability to give back to society and do something helpful. So one of the things I'll often tell people when we're talking about retiring early is to think a lot about what you're going to do. Don't just get out of the job the workforce but actually go to something not just from something have you found that as well that's exactly part that's that's a that's an impetus of how i ended up doing a study for this book is i noticed over the many years in this in the business of financial planning and writing uh and just financial media that the the happiest folks when it came to retirement were not necessarily the ones with the most money I, I work with, with families that have $5 million and $10 million. It doesn't mean they're any happier than families that have five hundred dollars or a million dollars. That these are all these are all significant amount of money. But the, the family that can do the things that they want to do and spend the time with, with people that they want to spend time with doing, and to your point, all of these things to live a rich uh, period of time after they stop with their core main job that it doesn't matter how much money we have as long as we we've, we've got we have enough to be able to fulfill those things and the more and the, and part of the research in the book that makes this book different than a lot of retirement books i actually quantify how many different things i talk about what different things as far as the actual hobbies but the more i call them core pursuits in the book the more core pursuits that you have as as a either a pre-retiree or early retiree, uh, the, the the happier you tend to be. Happiness levels rise, well-being rises as we have more things to do. So, to your point, we're going towards something and not away from something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, what are other th what are the types of things you see people going towards when they're when they're beginning to map out what they see as the retirement? Well, the. the in, in some cases, I see people continue to work. Uh, I have a cardiologist client who used to do major, major heart surgery. Uh, and it was, and you could tell that he got burned out over many years. He was doing heart transplants and these major, this heavy, heavy career for 20 years. And now he does something much, he, he does uh, varicose vein removal, which for him is like a, a Sunday ride uh, down the beach. <laughs> relative to hearts, but he, he still likes it because he does it two days a week or three days a week. It's part-time. He said, I can't just not work. I love doing something. And so even part-time work can be helpful. However, most folks that I work with, they are, they are, they are trading out work for being able to travel is number one. Um, 
Number two is some sort of, and, and I have a lot of examples of what these are in the book, but um, group exercise or active um, activity. So biking and hiking, which can all be group oriented, is a really big part of uh, what happy retirees that I found in, in my survey, which is 46 states here in America, uh, group ret- uh, activities that they are um it might be golf, which is group. It might be cycling, but uh, active endeavors that are that that also, if they're social, I've, I tend to find happiness levels rise with that as well. That's interesting. I was just, in fact, talking today with a client who's an elderly woman living by herself, and she's very active, but she obviously feels a little bit lonely. And she was talking about the pros and cons from a financial standpoint of moving into a senior facility. And I said, you know, you've got the money. It's not a financial question. We shouldn't be calculating, is it more profitable to stay in your house or to move to a retirement home? Rather, think about what your life would be like to be surrounded by people who are like you and have similar interests. And you can have a real social life, which I think is critical. It's, it's, it's funny that as you and I are both financial advisors, we haven't spoken at all about money. We're talking with Wes Moss, who wrote the book, You Can Retire Sooner. We started our our conversation talking about some of the aspects of retires, retiring maybe earlier than you might have expected. Let's talk about one of the practical issues a lot of people ask. These days, many people have refinanced their mortgage at an older age. They bought a new property at an older age, and they're wondering, should they keep that mortgage as they go into retirement? With interest rates so low, what do you tell them? I find and there's there are a lot of arguments to say money's so cheap right now. Interest rates around the world are negative. There's you know seventeen trillion dollars worth of negative rates around the world, and, and and mortgages are cheap. However, there is a really fascinating psychological benefit to getting out of your primary debt, uh, which in for Americans and probably most pe- folks around the world, it's, it's their mortgage. Uh, so uh, one of the most fascinating p- parts of the study that I uh, did, the survey that I did, and it's a cool chart in the book, it shows definitively as years to pay off mortgage comes down, happiness levels go up. It's this inverse relationship and or, or you could call it a direct relationship that it, the closer that the, the, that light at the end of the tunnel is to no longer having your primary uh, debt – that there's a there's a burden that gets lifted, and not only does the psychological burden get lifted of having to pay a big bank two, three, four thousand dollars a month, but now your decisions of where you spend your money become almost completely discretionary. Healthcare is probably number one now in America after a mortgage, but once you take care of the roof over your head in healthcare, food's not all that expensive. Now it all a vast majority of your your finances and your budget can can go towards those core pursuits we talked about. They can go towards more vacations. In fact, vacations there's another there's a direct relationship that I found I write about in the book that happy retirees, happier retirees take more vacations than unhappy retirees. So it's about where we can put our discretionary money. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I guess just having the weight of debt, that's what people talk about. Lifting that off of you can be, can be, makes you feel free. And that's, I think, a big part of the goal of, uh, of retirement. In fact, it's the, the goal of just being able to live a financially free life. Wes, let's talk a little bit about Social Security, because the question that people ask all the time is, if I'm retiring earlier, I was thinking of retiring at 65 or 67, but I'm going to go out at 60 or 62 or maybe even earlier. Is it smart, you think, for people just to take their Social Security as early as possible, or should they wait until they're 70 to try and maximize the amount that they will get on a monthly basis? There's no perfect answer here because we, we of course, don't know our, when our last day is, is going to come. And if we knew that, we would know exactly when to take Social Security, That which, which very often goes back to waiting at least to 66 uh, there's certainly a case we made, take it while you can get it. And, and the Social Security is, of course, there's worry that it's going to run dry. But the reality is that even if things go horribly wrong with Social Security, we're going to get about 75 percent of what we're promised. So, And I think that that's, that's relevant to, to, to factor into your calculation if you're not going to get Social Security for another 20 years from now. 
But I'm a big believer in trying to wait at least to your until your NRA, your normal retirement age. For most folks that are looking at this at 66, or if you're a little younger, at 67. I think that sure it makes financial sense to wait all the way to 70. But and and there's this great spousal benefit because your spouse, if you do end up passing on earlier than you think, your spouse gets a higher amount. However, we've got to live a very long time in order that for that 70 to really, really make sense. And there's, of course, the argument, hey, I might not be as active when I'm 85 uh, relative to when I'm 65. So that's that's my calculus is to try to take it in that middle range between 62 and 70. And to make it a little bit more complicated for people living outside the United States, if you receive a foreign pension, for example, let's say you live in Israel, and I'm not talking about the national insurance you receive from Israel, but if you receive a foreign work pension, your U.S. Social Security can be cut. In fact, by the way, it can also be cut for some people in the U.S., but let's, a lot of our listeners are Israel-based. Uh, your Social Security might be cut up to in half as a result of receiving a foreign pension. That's called the windfall elimination provision. So it's yet something else to discuss with your financial advisor when making the decision about when to take Social Security. Wes, we're just about out of time, but in the last few seconds, tell me, how can people follow you and follow your work? Well, we spend a lot of time on our Facebook page, which is just Wes Moss Money Matters, W-E-S-M-O-S-S, Money Matters. West Moss Money Matters. And of course, if you like the page, we, we post a couple things a day. There's a section on my website about the book and a quick video that I did about the book. And that's just westmoss.com, W-E-S-M-O-S-S.com. And, and hey, I even do Twitter. So I'm at westmoss365. <laughs> I would love to have some Twitter connections and slash followers all the way half around the world. So uh, any way you want to connect, it's easy to do so as uh, Doug, you and I are doing uh Uh, over the internet right now. Okay, we will put links to all of that at the show notes at goldsteinongelt.com. Wes Moss, thanks so much for your time. Doug, you're the best. Thank you so much for having me on the show. You've been listening to the Goldstein on Gelt show with money maven Doug Goldstein. Doug's weekly radio show is heard around the world, but if you miss it, you can download the podcast at www.goldsteinongelt.com. The Goldstein on Gelt Show gives you up-to-date financial ideas so you can get on the path to financial freedom. If you'd like your questions answered on the air or off, send Doug an email to doug at profile-financial.com. It's your money for your future, so join Doug every week to build your wealth on the Goldstein on Gelt Show.